Hey Flosstube, this is Tara with Wild Woman Crafts and welcome to official spooky season. <laughs> I think a lot of us have already been celebrating, uh, you know, but since before fall, since the, what is it, autumn equinox, <laughs> um, celebrating the start of kind of Halloween and October and fall and all that good stuff. Um, but it is now officially October. It is October 2nd. I have just returned home from Cube Day, as I'm now dubbing my in-office day. And I actually just got, we'll spoil like haul early, I just got my Stitching Goddess Designs shirt um, that I ordered. It says, is the season. I like that this one is a little bit less aggressively cross stitch. <laughs> Um, but you know, those who would know, would know. Um, anyway, so just got this in the mail. So I threw this on. This is not what I wore to work, but, <laughs> and as you can see, I've added some embellishments over here. I have a couple, one, two, three, four, five, uh, former finishes hanging out behind me. <coughs> and there's one more that you're going to see that is living down there, but it's a new fully finished object. So without further ado, we got fully finished objects, we got finishes, we got starts, we got unplanned plans, lots of whips, and giveaway winners. So thank you so much for all of the sweet words and encouragement on my last video, which was celebrating a thousand subscribers, and my Twisted Rainbow Sampler finish, which was a really huge finish for me. Um, and yeah. I don't want to gush about it too much, but it was very fun. And thank you for all your the excitement about the bags I offered to make. So I did draw winners. Um, I'm going to put screenshots up of uh, the winners. So for the $25 to Etsy gift card, um, we had Jillian Stridum, Stridum. 3241. Congrats, Jillian. I think her comment said like that she came from Amy Loves Totes channel. So thank you, Amy, for the shout out. Um, but also thank you for coming to check me out. Hopefully it was worth your while. You want something. <laughs> um, and then next up, uh, the sugar, spice, and everything nice kit. Um, that what is going to Julie Dodd 8630. So congrats, Julie. And last but not least, I can't believe I think like 21 of you asked for this bag. I'm so touched. <laughs> um, which is not a bag, obviously. I in my mind I was like, I'm gonna surprise them and I'm gonna have it done by the next video. Um, but I had to order more fusible fleece, which is not here yet, but it's gonna happen. I promise it's gonna happen. Um anyway. I actually was just so jazzed and again I have like quite a bit of this so I think I just decided to pull two names I don't know I'm feeling a little wild and crazy um so the first winner of an olive bag is the maniac stitcher so congrats thank you so much for putting your faith in me and then my second poll for the olive bag is cross stitch the globe Stephanie I <laughs> I promise I didn't just add another name to get Stephanie's. Uh, I was excited about it. You can see I already had zippers in stash, so I was very excited. I was like, let's just do it. I think either of these would look really good with that. So I am hyped. I'm going to make them. I promise the fleece is ordered. It is in route or something. I'm not sure when Joanne is going to get it together, but it was on sale, which is part of why I ordered it online. I just got like a ton. Um, but anyway, thank you so much again. So sweet. So many nice comments. Um, and if you're new, stick around. Who knows? Maybe I will continue to be in the bags and make those in the future, but no problem. Hi, y'all. Editing me here. Um, I completely blanked on giving you any further instructions about what to do with this uh, giveaway information. So I will comment on your comment on the last video. And if you could please contact me on Instagram, uh, let me know your address and I will get your stuff sorted out for you. Um, if you don't have Instagram, you can reply to your comment on YouTube and we will figure out something else. Thanks so much. 
Okay, on our regularly scheduled programming, I usually like to jump right into my fully finished objects of which I have four to share with you today. So the first one is a very exciting one. And this was the, this was one of my September WIPCO calls was to fully finish this. So I fully finished my Salem Sisters Apothecary sign. Um, oh, excuse me. I did, I put this on mat board that like the corner was kind of not perfectly square and I thought it wouldn't matter because so many things that I've made flat up until this point I've used some kind of cord or like decoration so I was like it won't matter but uh it did matter on this it turns out but that's fine I don't really care I think it looks fantastic I'm really happy with it um and also this was kind of an interesting experiment in uh picture this plus really being smaller and tighter I, you know I heard people always say like picture this plus is tighter but the called for fabric for this was um, Swigart, I think vintage country mocha. And I ended up using um, the same count as the model so it would fit on the board, but um, doubloon and by Picture This Plus. And it wasn't supposed to like fill out the whole area. That would be wild. Um, but it was supposed to be, I don't remember the exact dimensions I measured, but it was like three quarters of an inch to an inch maybe like half of an inch to three quarters of an inch um, smaller in both directions than what the stitch size should have been on a 32 count. So people are not lying when they say that. And I mean, you know, it shouldn't matter other than your stitching experience, unless you're trying to do something specific like this. So I think in the future, if I, if I was buying something specific to fit um, a piece, I would not, I would probably do like, I would buy in the same brand. Like if you don't want to use the called for, at least like go for the same brand because it really was a dramatic um, size difference. I was very intrigued by that. So I have a spot picked out on my wall where I want to hang this, but I need to add some um, additional hardware to the back to hang it, but I'm really happy about it. Um, and yep, in perfect, in perfect time for this season so very happy about that next up I caught up on my backlog of celebrate all year um finishing so this is a year-long sal that has um, monthly uh little circular motifs like this from Katie Landis of the Black Needle Society um I do believe you can still get in on this sal if you go to the Black Needle Society's website August was National Peach Month, um, so I fully finished this. And this finishing set, I think you can also buy as well in the vault, um, but it is a swappable display. So each of these months have like a magnet on the back. Some of them stick better than others. <laughs> um, so I did National Peach Month, which was August. And then, oh, this one I didn't put the magnet on because I'm worried that it's not gonna stick anyway. But I also did, you can get the visual, National Hot Dog Month, which was July's uh, chart. So very happy about that. And both of these are stitched on 32 count uh, Aqua Riviera by Wichelt, which I have lamented about. <laughs> um, and you can even see, don't, please don't judge my backs too much, but um, I don't, I have no idea how this is going to come across on camera, but this one was like undyed and it was extremely stiff and I was not able to get the fabric like as flat, even with ironing. And then this is the one that I boiled this piece of fabric or like I say I boiled it, but I got boiling water and then poured it over the fabric. I don't know if that like is, if it matters whether you like bring it up to temperature of the water versus pouring boiling water on it but technically I poured boiling water on it and let it soak until the water cooled um but you can see like the fabric I was able to get quite flat it was softer um so just more of my two cents on that but very happy with those so I'm fully caught up with everything I've stitched as you will see I did not finish September's but that's okay and then last but not least I found this was such a, like, this never <laughs> happens to me. I got so inspired by Stephanie of Cross Stitch the Globe's um, little thrifting video that I feel like 
I want to go look for some frames soon, but I haven't done that yet. But I did pop in a Target recently and I found this little bat frame in the like dollar spot section. It was $5, but how freaking cute is this? It's like kind of a duochrome. Like it, I think you're mostly seeing green on camera, but like in person, it also looks purple in different lights. Um... So yeah, this, I finished this in here. It doesn't, I kind of wish that it was something in a more interesting fabric <laughs> that I fully finished in here, but I was just kind of like, I know I have a bunch of Halloween smalls from last year um, that still need finishing. Let's just pick one that fits and this one fit the best. So this is Pirate's Booty by Wrought Iron Stitching. And it was in, I believe the 2020 three just cross stitch Halloween edition. If not, it's 2022. Um, I did this as a buddy stitch with Shandria of Shandria Carol stitch, or I think it's just Shandria Carol on YouTube. I keep wanting her to be Shandria Carol stitches, but anyway, Shandria Carol on YouTube, go check her out if you have not. Um, she and I, yep, stitched this together and she made these little chase, uh, changes in the raccoons face. It was supposed to be a more like peachy tone, but it's a raccoon. So we went with some, we kept using the same grays. Um, and then, yeah, I just glued this in. And I will say this frame was not super tolerant of the extra thickness of the fabric. So I would not add batting. That's for sure. I don't think it would work. And I even had to um, I had to get a screwdriver <laughs> and like back out the little tabs and turn them to go over the work and then tighten them back down. But it totally works. Um, so I'm gonna reposition this. It's also living on the plant stand now. So this is the last piece for my setup behind me. So this is my fourth fully finished object of September and we love to see it. Okay, so yep, that's where, <laughs> that's where it's chilling because you can still see it there. Um, next up, I have three starts to share with you since our last, um, chat. Where did it go? Oh, here we go. Um, which it's so funny. Oh, sorry. I have one more finish to show you. That's why I was like, I made this beautiful stack and it's not on top. The whole stack is wrong. No, I'm, I am wrong. I had four fully finished objects and one finish, which was September's, um, Stitch for Pride section. And this is a stitch along um, designed by and hosted by D's 20 Stitches on Flosstube and Instagram. Um, and while you can no longer purchase this stitch along, I highly recommend you follow D if you're not already in case you want to get a hold of these, some version of these in the future that might be released. Um, but yeah, so this brown section right here was the new section and <clears throat> I guess let me grab the thread I used even though you know I'm kind of pulling random stuff from stash so it's like who is to say that this could be replicated <laughs> um so I used a limited edition general arts I think that Jennifer the frog stitcher gave me but it says saddle on here so I don't know if saddle is a real color <laughs> And they're like mainline. I know general arts is just very finicky, but that is what I ended up using. And I really like how it looks. So the featured artist this month was Lehua Uakea. And she is a mixed Hawaiian, um, indigenous Hawaiian artist. Or sorry, they are. Their pronouns are they, them. My bad. Um, their pronouns are they, them. And they you specialize in a um like pacifica a lot of the videos that we watched use the term pacifica which was kind of new to me a like pac traditional pacifica uh textile called kappa cloth which is made from tree bark actually which was really interesting to watch like those process videos it's extremely labor intensive and hear about like the artists um journey to make their own tools and stuff and the use of symbols and how that art was nearly the art of making that textile was nearly lost um and it got me thinking a little bit uh, a fun fact about me <laughs> i in high school and after high school when i was still living in austin um was in a uh steel drum band 
And steel drums, if you don't know, are not originated from Jamaica. They are originated from the islands of Trinidad and Tobago. And steel drums are an instrument that are very unique because they're one of the only instruments that are um, like the inventor is still alive in our time. Uh, or like who, the person who's considered the father of the modern steel drum is still alive in our time, or he was, I think he passed away like within the last couple of years, Ellie Minette. Um, but he was around until very recently in training people and the art of steel drum building, because all steel drums are made by hand. There's no um, mechanized way that steel drums are made. And the tuning process, I, I mean, I could talk ad nauseum about steel drums. Um, the tuning process, it's like an eight year apprenticeship. Like it's a very, it's an art. Um, and that is another, example I could think of that I could relate to, not that I am Trinidadian, but that I've had some experience with and been around Trinidadians who are working to preserve that art and their culture and their history. Um, Cause it has a long, the invention of the steel drum has a long story to history in rebellion. Um, anyway, not to take away from Lehua Uakea's bit here, but these are representative of shark's teeth and Dee said that some of the motifs inside symbolize kind of momentous years in his life. Um, so anyway, very special. And yeah, let me some steel drums. <laughs> Would love to chat if anyone ever wants to talk about steel drums. <laughs> and when I go back to Austin, I still sometimes play with them. It's very fun. And that is living, I'm gonna show off again, in my bag that I made with my own project. <laughs> There we go. Okay, that's all the finishes. Three new starts. Let's keep them moving. Um, first up is the September Celebrate All Year chart. So this is Velociraptor Awareness Month. And y'all, I, I mean, you know, eight months having done this on time is pretty good, but it got me. <laughs> I did not stitch on this. I did not stitch on it. I started it. Technically, I think this is the neck of a Velociraptor. Holy moly. So yeah, this one's also on that Aqua Riviera, which is also not inspiring me. I did go ahead and treat this one with water as well. Um, but yeah, not really much to say there other than I have a lot to stitch. <laughs> and you know, another one's coming out this month. So we gotta get going. Um, yep. Yeah, so that is that one. Next up, the other two starts are a little bit more significant. Next up, I had to start with uh, Laura and Keisha of the Pattern Queens and Jennifer the Frog Stitcher on Instagram. And <clears throat> we started Silver Creek Samplers Izzy Decayin, which is so cute. And I had a pretty good little start on this. So here we are. Izzy is in there <laughs> for the most part. He needs another hand. And his bottle of wine, I think. But uh, yep, yeah. so this is stitched on 32 count uh, Cafe Olay by Fiber on a Whim using the called for DMC, which interestingly, they changed the called for on the pattern because some of us have older versions and then some of us for this, you know, buddy stitch bought the pattern more recently and the colors are not exactly the same, so... It's still all called for, it's, it's still all DMC, but the DMC have switched. And it's like, you know, B5200 versus Blanc or like, you know, whatever. They're close. Um, but yeah, so that is going well. And this will be one of my projects that I will continue to work on this month um, as a focus piece. Lastly, um, my other September WIPCO call was to start the last in this trio of hands-on designs, which is pantry patterns. And the last one that I have yet to stitch is this one, Toads, Warts, and All. So I have the, uh, they, they have it charted in like a primitive and a chalky palette. So I've been doing the chalky palette. I have stitched and fully finished one. I've stitched the second and, oh my gosh, y'all, the floss tube nose today. I'm just like feeling little hairs on my nose. <laughs> I've been using the chalky palette, so I have stitched, fully stitched um, the second one. And then last but not least, 
<laughs> I got a bit of a start on the third one here. So this is the width of the pattern. And I had had this other white <laughs> side of the jar stitched, but of course made a boo-boo. So I had to rip that out and did not get back down there. Um, but yeah, this is started. I'm stitching this on, I believe the called for for this palette which is chalkboard by fabrics by stephanie oh no it's charcoal belfast by yarn tree but i'm stitching it on charcoal by fabrics by stephanie and i'll have a good little chunk left when i am done which is exciting and ready for more halloween stuff i'm sure Okay, so my fourth start um, was unplanned. <laughs> unplanned. Katie did it again. Katie Landis did it again and surprised us with the companion piece to Santa's stamp collection, which I'll put a picture up of my finish of that, which I finished last year. Um, this is an adorable chart. It, yeah, like I said, it's all these stamps. Um, and it was like a surprise stitch along and we got the fabric in the nice list box in 2022. Um, so that was a very fun, exciting thing on like December 1st to open. And then you got a stamp every single day. Uh, this time she has released Jack's stamp collection. I'll have the photo here. And I love this. I love this even more than Santa's. Um, it's so fun and obviously it's all released so you can see it all here but I am going to treat this like how I did Santa's stamp collection and I am hoping to every day what I kind of shot for with Santa's was like every day to stitch the frame of the stamp at least even if I didn't get fully through the stamp because that's the most boring part. <laughs> And then since I was kidding this up, you know, this was like a surprise. It just like we got the October news for the Black Needle Society yesterday and this was in there, which was crazy and you could go buy it. Um, since I was fully kidding up from Stash, the main thing I was thinking about was there was a fabric mishap with the Niceless box that year. And so Santa Stamp Collection, while I love it, the ecru that was the color of the border of the stamps like really doesn't stand out on that um you can see it in person well enough that obviously I just went for it but um I wanted to avoid that this year I wanted it to really pop so I got into my stash I had all the DMC already which is crazy and I picked out this 32 count hyacinth by let me double check here Oh, sorry, I keep calling it Hyacinth. Hydrangea by Fiber on a Whim. And this is a 32 count Lugana that I'm pretty sure we got in maybe like the garden box from Black Needle Society. I'm not 100% sure, but definitely one of their bi-monthlies. Um, and here's where I am. I love it so much already. Um, as you can see, like I said, so yesterday I did start and get all of this done. Um, and today's October 2nd, but I was... It was cube day, so I did not get any of this done yet today. So this will be my project tonight to outline the second stamp and hopefully fill it in. I think it will be nice. It will be a little bit easier in some respect because some of those stamps on Santa's really got big, especially toward the bottom. And the last stamp was like a complete doozy. So I think it's nice because I think... I haven't double, I haven't confirmed this, but I think this is almost the exact same dimensions. And there are 31 days in October, um, whereas for Santa's it only went to 25. So there's more stamps in, in the same area. So I'm hoping that will mean that it is more attainable to keep up with this. Um, and I got to show off this needle minder because I do love it a lot. It says the Grim Ripper comes for us all. And that was a gift from Jennifer because she loves frogs. She's the frog stitcher. So she bought me one of those and gave that to me at camp, which was very fun. Um, and this is living in, it's got the full, the full fancy upgrade. It's living in my tulip pink dinosaur 
project keeper that Montana friend made for me. And it's very exciting because it has a lot of color. So it's got good use of the, the bobbin page here. Um, and yeah, I'm so jazzed about that. I'm so jazzed about the colors. And that was a very exciting start yesterday. But it might derail another plan that I had, which we will get to. But that's okay. We'll just, we're just taking it one day at a time. That is all the starts. I can't believe how far into this and I have not even gotten to my works in progress of which there are six. So hang with me. We got so much stitching today, which is part of why I was like, I gotta film this now. Pin in, I'm a little bit early than two weeks. What is happening here? Um, I am a little bit earlier than two weeks and that's because my sister is coming to visit me tomorrow. So when I would normally film, she's gotta be here. So I just wanted to be ahead of that. So works in progress here we go um first up is my dinosaur forest you know her you love her um and everything is hunky dory we are on track i've done this week's stitches already so now this triceratops is completely done and then i put these little like footprints in and I went down here, it's like, I, it's kind of random. I stitched this little white tree and then these little doodads down here. And this officially, y'all, I'm 92% done with this piece. That is my first zero on a color. <laughs> I finally finished a color. So very exciting, um, very thrilled about it. And staying on this pace, I am hoping to get this done at my bit as my big finish at stitch north at the end of the month um so that will be very exciting so we're gonna keep holding on if i can still squeeze in 200 stitches a week on this this has been my hashtag motif a week project from julian stitches shout out to julie this worked so well for me um and i also wanted to at this point i mean i'm so bad about like ever really shouting out youtubers i am so sorry because everyone is so nice other floss tubers but maria the green stitcher um i watched her video on lunch break today and she said the nicest words and shouted me out and she is also a joy to watch and has such fun projects and she said that this is her favorite and she has a birthday stitch along coming up so i guess that means i have to start my next owl forest in november for her for her birthday because i got an owl forest backlog okay <laughs> there's there's more owl forests don't worry about it this is just the one that we're getting done <laughs> Um, which that was uh, a kit if you're new around here that was a kit from owl forest so their fabric their threads all the goodies are from them. Next, I, since we last spoke, continue to try my best to put 200 stitches a day into my tea glasses project and it continues to look really good. <laughs> um, oh my goodness, here we go. So this pattern is by 8 Pixel. And I realized I haven't like stopped. Well, okay, sorry. Dinosaur Forest is only the first one where I would have had before pictures because everything else has been a start. So I'll have, I should have had where Dinosaur Forest was before, hopefully. If not, because <laughs> if there was no logical break in me yapping, um, here's the before of tea glass uh, compared with last time you saw it compared to now. So we're really filling out this glass. There's still a, a little bit in the middle here and then it's got a lot of uh, twigs as well. And yeah, starting to get some shadow down here. I think this was my first zero on this piece as well, which was very exciting. Um, this is stitched on a 16 count uh, Ada from Joann's that my friend and I dyed uh to eliminate the background on this this is a full coverage piece but i'm not going to stitch the background up here i am going to stitch all of the like table surface um so quite a lot to go on this i think checking on pattern keeper it's kind of tough because this is one of those ones i don't know if you've ever if you have ever experienced this but sometimes if a chart comes with like a black and a white and a color and like a symbols and no symbols Sometimes they all import into Pattern Keeper together. 
Um, and so I don't really know what the stitch count is and because obviously the sky is filled in but there are some instances of the color that's like the top section that are down here that I'm stitching so it's a hot mess but basically my best guess <laughs> I have in Notion and I think I'm about 36% done so this is most likely going away for the year um because there's just so many great seasonal charts up ahead and then of course there's like present stitching and stuff um, so this is probably out for the year, but it's been great and I'm much more heartened on it and I'm going to be much more excited to pick it up in the spring in 2025, I think, than I was in 2024 to pick it up. Next up is my stitch along that I'm hosting with Marjorie Made Stitches on, or I think, again, I think she's just Marjorie Made on YouTube. Uh, Marjorie made. She and I started this stitch along for the Tiny Modernist chart, Moths and the Moon. This is what it looks like. And this has been more successful than I could have hoped for. And everybody is stitching it on fabulous fabric. I love that like so many of us departed from um, the neutral look, which obviously it looks great on neutral. Otherwise I wouldn't want to stitch the pattern, but here's mine. <laughs> I got a good bit of work done on this. I am so happy with it. Um, so I am stitching mine on 36 count seaweed by Fox and Rabbit. And I will say I kind of was getting frustrated kind of filling this border off because I was having, I had a couple instances where I counted, you know, three linen threads over. And then one time I counted one linen thread, you know, just little mistakes like that and things weren't quite lining up. So I finally, I do have a aught light um, with like a magnifier in it. And um, I don't often need the additional light, but I got that set up and used the magnifier on this. And I was like, oh, this is a joy. I like cranked out 500 stitches in a day on it. Um, here's where it was before, if I haven't shown it already. <laughs> and yeah, I'm using all the called for DMC. I have done almost, no, I've not finished the cross stitch and this Luna Moth yet, but it obviously needs back stitch as well, which I think I'm hoping to do the back stitch as I go because I don't want to wait on it. <laughs> um, so yeah, everyone's progress is looking fantastic. If you want to see this on some like ethereal cotton candy fabric, definitely check out Cam the Stitcher and Jen's Fiberweb, and then Amy from Thread Gremlins is stitching more in my neck of the woods. She's stitching it on like a malachite, like a green, like it's so beautiful. And then I've seen a couple on Instagram as well. They're all beautiful. They're all beautiful. Like, and they make me want to stitch it 600 times because all the fabric is good. But <laughs> this one is mine and I am very happy with the progress so far. And this one is living in a bag made by Erin of the Hathaway Stitchers. And we love it. So, and some of these works in progress, like they might seem a little out of left field, but we're gonna, we're gonna explain it in plans. So next up, I went back to that old chestnut. If you've been around here, I have been stitching. This is actually, I think after Dinosaur Forest, this might be my oldest work in progress. It might be, or it's my second oldest, I'm not sure. But this is Life Potion by Forbidden Fiber Co. And this is based off the movie Hocus Pocus. This was a box they sold a couple years ago. And the text on here, which I always suck at reading, but we'll try, it says, bringeth, let me make sure, no pattern, okay. Bringeth to a full and rolling, roiling boil bubble, then add two drops of oil and a dead man's toe. Next, add a dab of newt saliva, dash of pox, stir thrice. One final thing and all is done. Add a piece of thine own tongue. Um, and basically, if you've not been around, this cauldron has been bullying me for two years. I've been trying to finish filling it. Um, and I made the executive decision a couple of videos ago that I'm not stitching this candle because it is thousands, thousands of stitches, this candle. And I'm never gonna finish it if I stitch that candle. So. Here's where we are. I finished the cauldron. 
<laughs> um, so yes, the cauldron is done and I took this little like smoke tendril out. So now officially it's just words. <laughs> it's just words. <laughs> so this is on <clears throat> Forbidden Fiber Co. Fabric. This is 40 count in the color Sanderson. This is my first 40 count project. And I will say after having stitched all of Deadly Aquarium on 40 count, I do think her 40 count runs a little tight. I'm not sure. Um, but by comparison, I feel like on this one, I'm like, I am working on 40 count, but on Deadly Aquarium, which was Atomic Ranch, I just didn't, I don't know. It didn't really like, it just didn't, it, I wasn't feeling like I'm stitching tiny right now. <laughs> um, which I know people stitch on much higher counts than 40, but that's pretty small for me. So anyway, this is where we are on this one. I am thrilled. Again, this could be another one. This one I'm shooting for a finish this year. I don't care when or how we get it get there but I I want it I want it gone <laughs> so that was very exciting and then next up uh I was like I don't know if I should explain this now no it's fine basically if you've seen this on Instagram I'm playing the great British British bake-off show by Jesse of Jesse Marie does stuff but if not don't worry I will explain it in a minute so next up, I stit, put some stitches in good old Beach Rat by the Artsy Housewife. And this is where it was before. And here it is now. I finally got a second color going here. This is like the chin of the seagull. Um, yep, stitches were put in. <laughs> this was a stitch con start with a group of us. And with the goal being that we finish at StitchCon next year, which today is StitchCon Invoice Day, and I got mine. I'm very excited. So I did pay for weekend A. So assuming all goes well, I will be there next year. I'm very excited already. Um, but anyway, this was a StitchCon start, hoping to get it done by StitchCon next year. And this is on a 36 count ma caramel macchiato by Fiber on a Whim. Um, and I'm loving it. <laughs> and it got moved into my bird bag. This project has been rehomed a couple times. <laughs> but I think hopefully this will be its its permanent house until until it's done. And I'm stitching that with all the called for, which is DMC and classic color works and gentle art. I'm not sure. Let's see. Gentle art, yep, yeah, gentle art, classic color works. Yep. Yeah which I put on, I think I got this from Miss Connie, who count twice, stitch once, pretty little thread jewelry. So I have another little fun bird hanging out in here. Um, but so far I've just been stitching with DMC on that. I've not gotten to an over dyed thread. <laughs> okay, and then lastly, oh, yep, here it is down here. This one's probably gonna be the biggest shock if you've been around here uh, for any length of time. Um, <laughs> I put not a lot, like a hundred stitches last night and I have more to go, but I put a hundred stitches in my custom stamped cross stitch, uh, which was a gift last year from a friend, which I affectionately call Fozzie and Fozzie, um, because this is Fozzie the Muppet and this is Fozzie my cat. Um, he is a big orange and a Muppet, really. So this is the image that she, you know, used some kind of online service and they kitted it up and everything. Um, this is the, the threads. I have this on this cool Millennium Falcon thread holder. So it's very fun to touch. <laughs> um, and I'm not far along, but here we are. Uh, so this is, yep. Yeah, I did some more stitching here. So you can kind of see from a distance, this is my cat on this side. And then on this side is the Muppet. You can kind of see like his mouth and like his shorts. Um, you can get it, I think it'll work. Um, yeah, so I have more stitches to put in this related to Great British Baking Show, which we will get into. I guess I can basically explain it now because next up will be plans. Um, so if you don't follow Jesse of Jesse Marie Does Stuff, who is the mind genius behind Whipgo, um, she came up with another one. 
<laughs> so I had watched, if you watch her most recent video, she explains that she invented a game for herself um, related to the reality television show Big Brother. And I watch a lot of reality TV, so I was like, oh my gosh, I don't really watch Big Brother and I don't know if I can get into another franchise right now. Um, but I was like, this would be fantastic to do for like other reality shows that I like. Um, I'll have to like keep that one in the back pocket. But she did me one better and on Instagram right now, she doesn't have like a video explaining this, but if you watch the Big Brother one, you get the idea. Um, she came up with a game for the Great British Bake Off or Bake Show, depending on whatever. I don't know. I know it has like two titles because the new season is now releasing to Netflix um, in the US. And I'm all in. So <laughs> the gist of it is basically that every can, there's a, a like Whipco, there's a million ways you can play this, like make it fun for you. Um, but the idea is you assign a project to every contestant and then based off things that happen in the show, um, that dictates what you stitch for the next week in between episodes. So I was kind of thinking on how I wanted to talk about this because I don't want to give any spoilers. And like, even if I don't say the contestant's name, if you've been looking at the rules, you know, things like was there a handshake or not? Like that's kind of a spoiler, even if I don't say who it was. So, you know, just jump, <laughs> jump ahead a little bit if you don't, if you want like zero, zero spoilers, but I'm going to, at least for the purposes of my videos, take the approach of, I'm not going to say the contestants. I'm just going to talk about the projects and what occurred that required me to stitch on them. So if you are comfortable with those terms, we will proceed. <laughs> So I guess going back through my whips just a little bit. Um, so this project got pulled because the person this is assigned to uh, got first in technical. Um, and so according to Jesse's structure, you multiply um, 50 times the number of players who are competing. But this week someone was sick. So even though there were 12 contestants, I only have to do 550 stitches because there was only 11 contestants in the technical challenge. So I still need to do like 400 and change stitches on this to complete her, um, her, the requirements there. And then, so sorry, we're going to work backwards just a little bit. I guess I could have done this as I went. So that was my first and technical piece. My last and technical piece it was beach wrap. So that was again, 11 times 25. So that was 275 stitches in beach wrap for the person who got last in technical. And then the person who was named Star Baker is my Hocus Pocus, my life potion piece. So this is my daily 100. So that's a, you know, like on one day I finished the cauldron and then on like another day I finished the tendril. And so I still need to do my 100 stitches today. Um, and Moss in the Moon was my, um, is attached to the person who got a handshake this week. And then no one got eliminated because someone was sick. So that is the requirements for the week, <laughs> according to Jesse's rules, which right now are fun. I am worried that with the, <clears throat> um, jack stamp collection that keeping up with this will be a little much but anyway i thought i would quickly run down so if you watch jesse's video about big brother she came up with this game like in the middle of the season so i think she had and there's just simply so much big brother content <laughs> i think she had a really good idea of like who each player was and like certain characteristics about them and she has like 90 something whips so I think it was possible for her to really like try to match you know like projects with people or like come up with a category you know all this stuff with Great British Bake Off you know it's not like I because I, I tried to watch up until the technical started um because nothing that happens really before then except for the handshake but um like, you know, I didn't want to, basically, I didn't want to pick projects, like, because of how the outcome was. I wanted to try to pick them in advance. 
So I had like kind of listened for a while during the like initial bake. Um, and then I had uh, Googled them and kind of read some like bios. And then I simply was like, you know what, forget it. I got to get all the stitching on Halloween projects done. All the Halloween projects are going on. So I'm not making any claims about these people's personality based on these projects. I just put down projects. Okay, so again, not going to tell you who's assigned to what, but the projects that are included are Life Potion. We just saw it. And I'm going to just, we're going to rapid fire pattern pictures here. Which is Hollow. Monster House, which that one, when, if that person does anything, that's going to be a, that's going to be when that one gets started. If I don't start it before. Uh, Moss and the Moon. Magnus Archives, which Cam and Marjorie, you're allowed to see this. It's okay. <laughs> I got them turned on to Magnus Archives, Archives podcast, quick side tangent after I converted Michaela of Cinematic Stitches to it as well. I got them all on board. <laughs> um, but don't go Googling these patterns. Okay, this is approved. You can look at this, but don't go Googling these patterns. Okay, you're not there yet. <laughs> this one's okay. This is the one I want to start for Halloween. Arctic Friends slash if at some point that one is like caught up in, in the stitch along, um, my backup would be going to my Flamingo All the Way by Hands on Design. Beach Rat, Fozzie and Fozzie, celebrate all year because goodness knows those Velociraptors need a lot of work and I don't, we haven't gotten the email yet for October's chart, but I, I could, if some, if by some miracle I'm done with September's while this is going on, there, there's going to be more to stitch. So celebrate all year. Autumn Night Alphabet, Izzy Decayan, and then lastly, fun one, Armchair Ornithologist. <laughs> um... So yeah, this will run for 10 episodes. So I kind of, um, so for now, I don't know if I'm gonna do this in a class year way later, but just on paper, I have like the episodes across here and then like contestant names. And then I'm just gonna put like, you know, Star Baker, Handshake, last and technical, first and technical, and then, you know, eliminate it if that's the case. So we'll just work our way across. Um, I think it's so fun. Like I said, especially as someone who's just a big yeah, reality television show enjoyer, I think it's a fun way to like really get invested because you're like, ooh, like whatever happens determines what I'm stitching on for the next week. So that's very exciting. Um, other plans. Like I said, we're gonna loosely try to get 1300 stitches on all these Halloween projects. I don't know, man. Um October whip go calls. <laughs> October whip code calls. One of them is to fully finish one of the witch's pantry charts. So obviously one of them is, you know, a complete stitch. So I can just fully finish that and that will count as a check on that. And then I need to start something out of the polar plunge series from hands on design. No idea when that's happening, but there it is. And then yeah. I think that's it. Just hanging on for dear life. There's so many fun things going on at this time of year. Um, and I guess I didn't really give you September stats, but for September, I did end up stitching 13,100 stitches, which makes this my third lowest stitchy month, <laughs> which is crazy that that's like on the lower end for me. I don't, we don't need to dissect all that. I had seven starts, which I don't identify with once again, and five finishes. Um... Yeah. And then quickly, I will show you my little knitting update on my little knitting project. We're going to have updates on this through the rest of the year when it's hopefully done. Because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of reaching a point where I'm like, you know, it's one thing to be like, oh, if I just do like one little thing a day, if I just do one little thing a day. But if you have like 10 things that you're doing one little thing a day on, it kind of adds up. <laughs> it doesn't really work anymore. But um here we are anyway. So this is the Starfighter scarf um, from the Star Wars Knit the Galaxy book. And this is where it was last time you saw it. So we've added two whole ships and I'm on a third one. This, um, this ship up here is the last one of chart C. So there's charts A, B, C, and D. Um, and then you repeat them all again. 
So we are almost done with chart C once I get this ship done and then a little bit of the like red and green color work and then we'll be on chart D and then we'll be halfway. <laughs> um, so I have crossed over 25%. Um, yeah, not really much to say. This is double knit. It is in the called for yarn. I splurged for my friend. This is a friend from college that I'm knitting this for. Um, and he's very happy to receive it. Any other questions, please feel free to ask below. But yeah, so this is my, I'm doing four rows a day on this, which is still working, still working so far. But I think as well, like when I fly to Stitch North, like I could probably, you know, bank a few, <laughs> bank a few rows on that trip. I don't know, we'll see, but we're hanging on right now. Um, that is that. And then I don't really have any acquisitions to show. I do, I have my shirts. And then one other thing I'm going to show quickly is my, my sweet partner. I, um, I have featured some products from the Woobles before on this channel, <laughs> but they are, especially as someone who knows how to crochet pretty well, um, or I don't know if I'm that good at it, but whatever. Like I have enough confidence that I don't feel I need this type of kit to enjoy crocheting. Um, so I told him I was, I've, I've like tried to not buy them basically. And I was like, Ooh, look at this. Like, I don't need it. I'm not going to buy it. And what do you know? He just went and bought the whole thing. So <laughs> he got the Pusheen set. So this is Pusheen who is a, you know, little cartoon cat. This is what Pusheen looks like. And what honestly, more so than the Woobles themselves, what really was just like get gnawing at me is that the crochet hooks have her on there. <laughs> I freaking died. So he got me this one. And then he also got me her two sisters. I didn't even know she had sisters. So this, this is Stormy. <laughs> And here's what Stormy looks like drawn. She is kind of a cloud. I don't know if they're all girls. And then this is Pip, who looks kind of like a, um, <laughs> it's like a banta. <laughs> and this is what Pip looks like drawn. She's a little scrungly. This is so cute. So no idea what I'm doing those. <laughs> no idea, but I am thankful to have them. That was very sweet of him to buy me all those. Um, he didn't need to. Okay. <laughs> Lastly, um, reading, watching, playing. I'm still not reading. Black Needle Society's next book club chat is this weekend and they're discussing The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. My library did not have it for me in time. And I did find out if you are in Georgia, um, there is a like a Georgia state library card. It's called the Pines card um, if you are a resident of Georgia. So I now have a second library card, which is exciting. And my wait time is less on my Pines card than it is on my county card. Um, but not, uh, but not fast enough. So <laughs> I haven't read it. I'm not going and my sister's going to be here. So I'm not going but um, so yeah, I have not been reading. And then as far as watching, we finished watching Boardwalk Empire, which was like a big HBO show. It was like kind of the big successor to The Sopranos, I believe. Um, it's focused on like prohibition in the US, like 1920s Atlantic City. Um, it's a very good show. It's a very good show. And there's a reason it was wildly popular. I'm sure a lot of people have seen it, but we enjoyed it. We finally watched it. But the more recent show that we're now watching, um, that my partner had already watched, but he was like, I would watch it again. You need to see this is Chaos on Netflix, um, which is like a modern retelling of Hercules, I believe. Um, very interesting style, very fantastic cast. Jeff Goldblum plays Zeus. I'm enjoying it a lot. I'm only a couple of episodes in, but I'm already liking where we're going. And then as far as playing, I finished Zelda Skyward Sword, which is very exciting for me. Uh, this is kind of my first older Zelda title and it made me fight for it at different points because I 
it was designed for we, that's all I'm gonna say. And yeah, the mapping to the buttons, I've complained about it, it's fine. We got through, I had a great time. There's a lot of good lore in there, which is why my brother wanted me to play it. Check it off the list. And then what was exciting is last week, the new Zelda title, Echoes of Wisdom, came out. And this is the first one where you get to play as Zelda in a Legend of Zelda game. Um, so that was very exciting. I think, you know, for people who've probably been with this franchise for decades, it meant a lot. Um, I'm certainly having fun, but I don't think maybe it has like the gravitas for me. I'm just like, oh, I'm having a great time. But I've played a little bit of it. It's fun having a good time. I just, I, I'm, I'm at that crossroads of like, I do want to play video games a little bit more. I'm like, I got so much ditchy homework to do. <laughs> I don't have time for this, but Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling because I need to get this all together. I gotta do chores for my sister, I gotta wash sheets, all that good stuff. But I'm very excited for her to be here. We don't have any big plans. It's just nice to get to hang out with her one on one once a year. And this is a very fun time of year to be here. It's not a miserable time to exist in Atlanta. So very excited for her to come visit. Um, yeah, thank you again for all the sweet comments. Congrats to the winners. Um, hopefully I'll, I'll have, I, sh I should have had text then and I should have said this then, but please reach out to me on Instagram if you want so we can figure out what we're doing for you. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. I hope to see you around in the future. Leave a comment. Tell me, I was like, you know, the need for Halloween projects never ends. So tell me what Halloween projects you're working on. Or if Halloween is not your thing, what is your favorite type of project to work on in October if you're not a Halloween stitcher? Because that's okay. It's not for everybody. Not everything needs to be for everybody. And in fact, it shouldn't because that is variety <laughs> and diversity. We love it. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm at the rambling point. So thank you so much. I'm so thrilled and I will make the bags and I will be stitching a lot. I got to get to those stamps. So... <laughs> I hope to catch you next time. Everyone take care. I also, uh, other things I should have said at the beginning. I'm so sorry. I'm like frazzled. We were extremely lucky with Hurricane Helene. Um, it ended up going a little bit east of Atlanta, whereas I think, it, you know, for a while it was tracking right over us. We were extremely, extremely lucky that we didn't even really lose power for any significant amount of time. Like when we woke up that morning that it was supposed to be like, coming in on Friday morning, um, the oven light was blinking. And so, you know, we had lost power for some amount of time, but by the time we woke up, it was on and we didn't really experience any other effects except for, um, water is leaking through our ceiling. <laughs> water is leaking through our ceiling, but we're renters. So it's one of those, like, it's a frustration and it's something to deal with and we are dealing with it, but it's not, um, financially impacting me in the way it would if I was a homeowner. Um, so very grateful, uh, for that. And yeah, it's just, it's unbelievable what's going on in the Carolinas and in Tampa. I just, I know several people in a lot of areas where that are impacted and thankfully all of their families are are safe and my cousins and stuff that live up in North Carolina are all safe um but it's just it's a lot so uh not to end it on like super down note but we're okay we were extremely fortunate with that I'll leave you to go onto those other websites or onto your next floss tube and take care everyone and keep yourself safe so hope to see you next time bye